Hello there, my name is Josh and I'm a Senior Principal Support Engineer with Milestone Systems and today we're going to walk through setting up dynamic DNS and Let's Encrypt certificates with XProtect Mobile. Uh, this is using a PowerShell module that I put together just to make the process a little bit easier to handle and we're going to, uh, to go through the process using a free DDNS hostname from Dynu DNS. So before you get started, go to dynu.com and create an account. Uh, it appears to be free. And then uh, come back here to the control panel when you're ready. So let's get started. Uh, what we'll do first is create a DDNS address. So we'll add and let's pick something like xprotectmobile.dynu.net. Let's see if that's available. And it is. OK, so that is our DNS name that we're going to use. And now we need to grab our API key and uh, secret. So let's go back to Control Panel and API Credentials. And you'll have to hit Reset Credentials. And it's going to show you your client ID in secret. And I want you to copy that into Notepad for now because you're going to need it later. And if you don't copy it now, you'll have to reset your credentials again later anyway. OK, now these are real uh, uh, API key credentials, but I'm going to reset them at the end of this video. Um, so don't show your credentials to anybody, otherwise they'll be able to use them. Okay, let's go back to the control panel, and I'm just going to leave it on the uh, on this page here so I can remember the name we chose. All right, and so next we're going to install a PowerShell module. Uh, it's called Posh XProtect Mobile. Uh, this is something that I put together. Um, just to make this process a little bit easier, it uses a, another PowerShell module called posh-acme. Um, it's also open source, and, uh, and that's what we're using to handle the Let's Encrypt certificate um, uh, challenges and pulling down certificate, importing it into Windows. Okay, let's open up PowerShell as administrator. And I'm just going to make this text a bit bigger so it's easier for you to see. And we'll just start by installing the module. So install module posh xprotect mobile. Now you might get a couple of warnings. We'll see what we get here. Anytime now. So the first run through, um, your PowerShell might need to update the PowerShell get NuGet module. So um, that's what it's asking us to do. Yes, let's go ahead and update PowerShell get. Or uh, let's see, PowerShell get uses NuGet provider, and it, it needs to update the NuGet provider for PowerShell. So yes, let's continue. And then it's going to ask us if we want to trust PS Gallery. PS Gallery is Microsoft's uh, module provider for PowerShell modules. Um, if you want to continue through this uh, through this demo, you'll want to hit yes as well. Uh, but it's up to you what uh, what repositories you choose to trust. All right, it's installed. So let's see what commands we have get command module posh xprotect mobile. And we're going to use um, a command that just makes it as easy as possible. It's start le cert setup using dynu. Um, so start le cert, and then we'll just hit tab. And this is going to walk us through. It's going to ask, uh, ask for the information that the, uh, that the commands need to um, to generate the certificate for you, 
so you don't have to edit any PowerShell scripts or anything like that. So let's hit enter. And it wants our domain name. That's going to be this right here, expertechmobile.dinu.net in my case. And now it wants an email address. This is to send notifications. So Let's Encrypt will send you notifications when your certificate's about to expire. You probably want to use that. Uh, I'm just going to put in a dummy address here. And Dynu Client ID. That'll be this number. secret. Make sure not to get any of the white space at the end. And let's see how we do. So it's uh, because PowerShell or the, this module is using Posh uh, Acme, it wants to download Posh Acme for us. So we'll go ahead and say yes. Now the first time it's going to generate a certificate using um, the staging server from Let's Encrypt. So what's happening right now is that it's used that Dynu API key to create a DNS entry that um, Let's Encrypt asked us to make. So if we go over here and we look at our DNS records, we're going to see a funny looking record right here, Acme Challenge with, um, with a random key here. So uh, so what they've done is Let's Encrypt has said, OK, you need to prove that you have control over this domain name. So create a TXT record in DNS with this value, and, uh, and then let me know when that's done. And so Posh Acme, the PowerShell module Posh Acme, has taken care of that for us. Uh, we gave it the API key information. And it's, uh, it's created that DNS record for us. And now it's just going to wait another minute uh, before telling Let's Encrypt to check the record uh, that we created. And after that happens, they will trust the, uh, the private key that we've used um, in that process for any future uh, certificates that we generate. And, uh, and it's just their way of validating that you have control over a domain without having to have user interaction with, um, with employees at Let's Encrypt. So that's why they're able to do this for free. Now, the first time through, it's going against the staging server. Um, they have more lax policies as far as how frequently you can generate certificates. Um, and it's good for, for just testing things out before you switch over to their production server where um, they, uh, they, they'll rate limit um, the number of times you can generate certificates for specific domains. So that should have passed. So now it's going to switch over to the, uh, the production Let's Encrypt server. And it's going to wait another two minutes. Uh, because it's uh, it's using a different server to uh, to generate that key, uh, so they don't trust us just yet. I found while building the module that um, that there seems to be a bug in Windows where sometimes when you import a certificate into the Windows Certificate Store, the first time you do it. Uh, the certificate is not properly imported by Windows, and uh, and then so it just didn't work with the mobile server. Um, but then the second time through, it worked fine. So we uh, we generate the first first certificate on the staging server to uh, to get around that issue. Uh, but also, it's just a good practice you know, if you get your API key wrong or um, just do something wrong in the process, it's better to fail against the staging server than, uh, than the production server, that's all.
Okay, we're almost there. When uh, when this finishes, we should get our production certificate. It's going to get installed into the Windows Certificate Store, and then the mobile server will be restarted, and the uh, the SSL certificate binding will be updated. Um, so once it's finished, it should actually launch a browser to our HTTPS interface, so we can confirm that uh, that our certificate's working. Okay, we can see this icon at the bottom right. Our mobile server is stopping. And it's starting up now. Now it's um, creating a scheduled task to take care of the renewals. Uh, Let's Encrypt certificates expire every 90 days. And rather than have you go through this process every 90 days, uh, this module is going to create a scheduled task for you so that um, after 60 days, the certificate should automatically be renewed, uh, and it'll just keep uh, checking every day whether the certificate's eligible for renew renewal yet. So we'll put in our password. Okay. We have our certificate. Let's take a look at it. It's issued by Let's Encrypt. And it looks good. Okay, now let's just show you real quick what the um, where the certificate is in Windows. So if we get child item cert local machine my, you're gonna see some certificates. This is the the one that we just registered, and um, that's the the hash or the thumbprint for that certificate. Um, Really, what the module is doing is it's updating using uh, updating that binding using NetSH. So it's uh, I believe NetSH HTTP show SL cert IP port equals. Oh my gosh, I got it right. All right, so the certificate hash here, you'll notice that matches the value here. So we're just doing a NetSH HTTP update or add SSL cert, and then just setting it appropriately. Um, now the scheduled task, let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's our scheduled task. It's set to run with highest privileges. That's because it's gonna be installing certificates into the Windows certificate store, so it needs to run with elevated privileges. Uh, it'll run whether you're logged in or not. It's going to run every day at 2 a.m. And then the action is it's going to um, launch a PowerShell script that it created in C slash scripts. So let's take a look at that. So what we're doing here is um, getting a new, uh, getting the current certificate so that if it succeeds uh, in getting a new certificate, we can clean up the old certificate out of the Windows Certificate Store. Uh, and then we submit our renewal. And if it's not up for renewal, it's going to just stop right here. Uh, if it is up for renewal, it's going to pass the new certificate to the set mobile certificate command, do a little bit of logging and then remove the old certificate. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.